Put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the deceit of the devil. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the word of this darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. This is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 to 13. In one of the exorcisms of the great Father Gabriel Amort, aside from the usual names he invoked, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this time he invoked, in the name of Saint Joseph. At the mention of Saint Joseph, the devil groaned that eventually left the woman whom Father Amort was exorcising in peace. In the Holy Trinity, God the Father has the ultimate authority so that Jesus always teaches that he came to obey his Father's will. The Holy Family that symbolizes the Holy Trinity has the Father who possesses the ultimate authority. As such, Saint Joseph is endowed not only with extraordinary holiness by God the Father, whom he represents, Saint Joseph is also gifted with the power of the Father to protect the child Jesus and the Blessed Virgin Mary from all evils. That is why among the many titles given to Saint Joseph by holy tradition, it is terror of the devil that is most arresting. With the introduction of Harry Potter in so many schools worldwide, Satan has succeeded to convince the young people that Satan is just a fantasy, a figment of their imagination. So hell is also a fantasy and it does not exist. This has made our youth today an open target of diabolical attacks. With the introduction of sex education, graduates of the United Nations controlled schools have lost their purity and now are blind to God. This has led to the loss of faith and the general moral degradation of our society with the legalization of abortion, divorce, and homosexual marriage. All these are heinous crimes, which the Catechism of the Catholic Church says are punishable by heaven with a universal deluge of fire from the sky. So St. John Paul II's 1995 encyclical Evangelium Vitae, Article 104, it reads, In the book of Revelation, the great portent of the woman is accompanied by another portent which appeared in heaven, a great red dragon, which represents Satan, the personal power of evil, and all the powers of evil at work in history and opposing the church mission. The hostility of the powers of evil is, in fact, an insidious opposition which, before affecting the disciples of Jesus, is directed against his mother. Matthew 2, 13-15 confirms that to save the life of her son from those who fear him as a dangerous threat, Mary had to flee with Joseph and the child into Egypt. We are told that we are in the end times if we see great loss of faith and the increased diabolical activities. In his 1972 homily, Deliver Us from Evil, Pope Paul VI spoke of the smoke of Satan and the Catholic Church. He said, From the crux of the walls of the Church, the smoke of Satan has entered into the temple of God. The qualche fessura Sia entrata el fumo de Satana nel Tempio de Dio. The Pope added, We believe that something preternatural has come into the world, specifically to disturb, to suffocate the fruits of the Ecumenical Council, and to prevent the Church from breaking out into the hymn of joy for having recovered the fullness and awareness of herself. In his general audience of November 15, 1972, Pope Paul VI also confirmed that one of the greatest needs of the Church today 
is the defense against that evil we call the devil. Mary helps the church to realize that life is the center of a great struggle between good and evil, between light and darkness. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, we read that the dragon wishes to devour the child brought forth, a figure of Christ, whom Mary in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, brought forth in the fullness of time, and in whom the church must unceasingly offer to people in every age, of which St. Joseph is the protector of Jesus and Mary, members of the Holy Family. The miracle of the sun on the 13th of October 1917 makes us realize the importance of the protection of St. Joseph in the Church, usually symbolized by the Holy Family. St. Joseph more than ever is needed in the end times, which the Catechists and the Catholic Church describe as characterized by occultism and Satanism, the reign of the Antichrist. Let us recount our faith in God through the instrumentality of St. Joseph in some biblical or traditional events in the life of the Holy Family to make us stronger in our devotion to St. Joseph as the terror of the devil. The father of the church origin remarks that the order given by the angel to St. Joseph to go into Egypt included the power to drive away all the devils who had built their empire in that infidel land of Egypt. Scripture tells us that as soon as St. Joseph, the Holy Patriarch, entered Egypt with the child, Jesus, and his Immaculate Mother, the idols were overturned, the oracles destroyed themselves, the father of lies was chained down, and the infernal spirits of darkness took flight at the appearance of the Son of Justice, through then hardly risen and enveloped in the morning garb of humanity. In Isaiah 19, these prodigies were foretold, and the glory of these victories, doubtless, were attributed to the infant God. But he was pleased to achieve them to the arm of St. Joseph, being the head of the family and guide and savior of the savior of the world. Seeing himself overcome, the devil then began to tremble at the name of St. Joseph, but greater fear threatened Satan when he saw St. Joseph's great merits, his sanctity, his dignity, and his power shine forth. St. Joseph is one of the first dignitaries of heaven. He occupies the rank which is due to the king's father and the queen's spouse. We know Satan does not take things for granted. As before a dying man, he sends more demons to make sure he captures the soul. Lucifer, being aware of the great dignity of St. Joseph in heaven, trembles with great fear as he approaches the bed of a dying person who, during his life, had been a true devotee of St. Joseph. Satan knows that our divine Savior, in order to reward this great saint for having saved him from the sword of Herod and a temporal death, has given a special privilege of preserving those dying persons who during life look up to him as their protector from the power of the devil and eternal death. A dying man was being tormented by visions of Satan, dragging him headlong into the infernal abyss. He was fighting a losing battle when I was called in to assist at his deathbed. The poor man had lived in debauchery for years and had been involved in many communist activities that infiltrated countless colleges and universities. One of them was his son's. His son had asked me to hear his father's confession and administer his last rites. Fear was in the man's eyes and he could barely speak, shaking and sweating profusely as he slowly made his confession, I told him to have recourse to St. Joseph and to plead for his help. Repeatedly, I told him to have strong faith in Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, but especially to St. Joseph in his last moment, 
for St. Joseph is the terror of the devil and also the conqueror of hell. Little by little, the dying man slowly come down, and I recounted the story of how all the idols of Satan fell to the ground as soon as St. Joseph, together with Jesus and Mary, entered Egypt when they fled to the country upon the angel's inspiration. This only meant that no devil could ever prevail on the Holy Family because of St. Joseph's protection. Similarly, no devil would succeed in damning a person if he has recourse to God through St. Joseph's powerful protection. Before I could speak further, the dying man, one by one, told all his sins from the time he could remember up to that very hour that I sat down with him to hear his confession. He was no longer afraid, and all the devils that were around him, he said, had left one by one in haste. After the dying man had finished, his last words were, Thank you, St. Joseph, for helping me. I can now die in peace. And he expired. This is our challenge, the protection of St. Joseph, the terror of the devil. From Mary of Agrita, City of God, we learn the following consoling revelations. First, those who invoke St. Joseph shall obtain from God by his intercession the gift of chastity and shall not be conquered by the temptation of the senses. Second, they shall receive particular graces to deliver them from sin. Third, they shall obtain a true devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And fourth, they shall have a good and happy death, and that all decisive moment be defended against the assaults of Satan. Fifth, they shall be delivered when expedient for them from bodily sufferings and shall find help in their afflictions. Six, if married but barren, they shall be blessed with offsprings. Seven, the unemployed but good person will easily find a job compatible to his career. Eight, the demons shall have extreme dread of the glorious name of St. Joseph. St. Paul of Maul, a Belgian mystic of the 18th century who belonged to the Benedictine Monastery of Flanders, prophesied that God will uncover the incorrupt body of St. Joseph to make many prodigies at the end times and will protect us from the fire from the sky. To obtain all the eight promises, let us not tire to consecrate our life daily to St. Joseph, reciting this prayer of consecration to him. Dear St. Joseph, terror of demons, pave the way for Mary as she paves the way for her son. Jesus Christ into the world, our families and our hearts. Help protect us from the Jezebel spirit and all demons operating in the feministic world that emasculate men. Intercede on our behalf, dear Saint Joseph. You protected Mary, your most chaste spouse, and in doing so, did what Adam did not do in the garden you protected. Therefore, Saint Joseph, terror of demons, conqueror of this failure of Adam, bestow upon all fathers the grace of authentic masculinity and purity of heart, so that they too can defend and protect the family. Prepare the way for Mary in our homes as terror of demons, cause them to flee from us. Saint Joseph, help cast out all demons that are preventing our hearts from being receptive, so that she, who is receptivity, may pour out her graces in our hearts and thus enable us to more perfectly receive retain and share the merciful love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Saint Joseph, there of the demons, pray for and intercede for us. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.